Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and you've noticed on this channel over the last couple of months, there have been a lot of updates to Blender 2.8. That's because they've been doing something called Blender Code Quest, which was get a whole bunch of the core developers for the Blender project together in the same location and improve Blender as much as possible. So they're working on the next version of Blender, Blender 2.8. And there's been a lot of question marks about when we're actually going to see uh, what's changed in Blender 2.8 actually come live. And they've actually replay, uh, released a roadmap of the upcoming versions. So that's what we're going to discuss today. But before we get into that, let's get a little bit into uh, what is added or improved in Blender 2.8 and why you should be excited about this upcoming release. Now this is from their page, basically for the Blender 2.8 page. I will toss both links down below today. But the improvements here, obviously the first one, the one that everyone is most excited about is the new real-time renderer called EV or EEVEE. -E -E -E. um, pretty powerful stuff. I've actually done a full video just on EV. I'll throw that link down below as well. But basically a much faster PVR or physically based rendering based engine for real-time visualization in the viewport is coming along. The viewport in Blender is about to get a whole lot nicer. Uh, another big thing that's changing, and I don't think this actually made the initial 2.8 release because of a last minute bug, but Grease Pencil has been given a whole lot of new power. Basically, there is now a full 2D animation suite inside of Blender. So the Grease Pencil is now a full blown 2D artist tool for um, mixing 2D and 3D together. So if you're a 2D artist, Blender 2.8 is going to be a whole lot nicer for you. Sadly, um, again, it didn't make the initial release, I believe, but uh, it will be there soon, I hope. Uh, next up, they've got some organizational changes. Um, there's no more limitation on layers. Um, there's now, uh, you can see you're, you're seen into collection and view layers. Uh, they've got workspaces now, complete changes to the UI. The UI has been updated massively. I've also done some videos on UI changes in Blender if you're interested in those. Uh, dependency graph has been completely overhauled. That's more of a plumbing's behind the scenes thing. You're not going to see a whole lot of it, but it is a fundamental change to the way Blender works and the future of Blender. And unfortunately, it's also going to have huge ramifications for plugin developers for Blender. So Blender 2.8 is going to break a lot of things, but it is very much worth it. The, the overhauled UI is a little polarizing. Some people love it. Some people hate it, but it has needed an update for sure. And then on top of that, EV is going to be just awesome. So um, Blender 2.8 is definitely worth checking out. Now, one of the challenges is, oh, well, this might have actually updated since. No, no, it isn't out yet. Well, today, later on today, anyways, there's supposed to be a new release. So now let's get into the uh, roadmap for Blender 2.8. So there's finally some tentative answers to when will this all be live? So, you know, enough with this code quest stuff. Code quest is done. Their, uh, their blitzing of adding new features is done. Now we're in the uh, polishing phase, in the improvements phase, but not in the, you know, big fundamental changes anymore. So now that this is done, what is the timeline to move forward? Well, today, being July 2nd when I record this, the alpha release was supposed to come. Now, as you saw from the last page, there's no formal um, alpha release as of yet. I've been kind of keeping an eye out for it. It isn't available, but you can still grab the nightly builds. So you should have almost the same effect if you go ahead and grab the nightly builds. But um, today we we're supposed to see the... Um, well, for one, we see the end of Code Quest. So Code Quest is done. I would definitely consider it a success. And we're supposed to see the formal alpha release. And then the bug tracker is being switched over to be used just for crashes. Now, one of those things to come away from this is also all uh, add-ons are going to be initially disabled. And they're also going to be making some changes to the Python API as time goes on. And another thing about the alpha release is they're switching to their new updated theme. It's this darker gray. I actually like it a lot better than the default theme. And there are all the other theme options are in there. So it's not a big deal. I think they're just basically pushing it as the default theme. So, you know, people can start battle testing it. And that's about it. So today we see the release of the alpha and then their timeline is going forward. So next month, about midpoint of next month, we're going to see the beta release. Um, so hopefully at this point, Blender 2.0 will be future complete. So that means we will move 100% bug fix only from that point on. Uh, bug tracker grand reopening uh, merged the 2.8 branch into master. Uh, so it means the source code is kind of, they're going to unfork it basically. So that will now be the new master branch and the older versions like 2.79 will be on their own branches, etc. cetera. Um, You'll get release notes of what's actually changed there. And again, more bug fixing. Now, as we move further and further 
on with this timeline, the less and less accurate it will be. So the July 2nd, I'm assuming we'll see an alpha release sometime today. So they're going to hit that one. Uh, August 12th, there's nothing really too grand there. There's They're not really depending on much. So it's just basically a month and a bit of testing and improvement. So I'm pretty sure we'll see that beta release on time there. Then it starts as you moving out. Those targets are idealized targets. They're not set in stone. So don't be surprised if on October the 20th, there is no release candidate. And if you don't know about software release schedules, basically it goes alpha, beta, and then you normally have a series of release candidates. So, you know, release candidate one, release candidate two, release candidate three, and then you have the final product or the 1.0 version. And again, people have been abusing the hell out of the title alpha and beta in recent years, so they're becoming less and less meaningful, but Blender is following a pretty traditional naming convention here. So after this August release, you're looking at September the 19th, having the final um, Python API in. That is when all of the old um, add-ons should be updated to the new Python API. Uh, Python is the programming language in, ex, uh, embedded inside of Blender and uh, add-ins are written using Python. So those changes are going to have a huge effect on the back catalog of um, add-ins supported. And you're going to see Blender 2.8 is going to break a whole swath of old ones. So if you've got uh, the developers are no longer supporting these things, you're going to probably see Blender 2.8 being the point where a lot of old add-ons simply stop working. But on the September the 19th date, that's when we're supposed to start looking at add-on developers updating. And they'll spend the next month doing so. So at which point in time we'll have the October 20th release candidate. Ideally, everything will work out fine. And then, you know, a month to two months to three months after that release candidate, you will hopefully see a full final release. Now, they don't um, dedicate to that value. So who knows when that will actually be. But a lot of that kind of comes down to generally there's multiple release candidates. But the cool thing is as you get more towards that end of the spectrum, it's also more production ready. So you're probably safer to use the release candidate version in your actual production pipeline, whereas I would never recommend it with the alpha. Basically, I would say until this step is done, you're not even close because um, this is when uh, the underlying plumbing, that's when the last of the gut changes are going to come into effect. And that's the kind of stuff that really breaks things. But uh, that is the... Um, the forecasted timeline anyways for Blunder 2.8. So hopefully we'll see a final release right about the end of this year, beginning of next year. Now that's all based off of, you know, if there's game killing bugs in there, there's no choice. They got to fix them. And then that pushes back the timeline respectively. This is a pretty optimistic timeline, I would say. And now that they're not all together in the same location, moving quick on these kind of changes is going to be a little bit more tricky. But the cool thing is, again, uh, as of, let's see, it was the beta release right here. Uh, it is now feature locked. I think that's when they said. Yeah. So that's basically the point where um, yeah, there we go. All the features are in locked in stone. So then all developers really will be doing is working on bug fixes. So uh, hopefully by the time the release candidate rolls around, we are talking about a pretty stable release. Now, considering the huge number of things that are actually available in Blender, um, and that may be a somewhat optimistic timeline, but I hope to see it. And you know what? If we get Blender 2.8 by the end of the year, I will consider that incredibly successful. So that was it. Uh, are you excited about Blender 2.8? If so, let me know in the comments down below. And I hope to see that the version that ships, uh, the, the alpha version, actually does come with Grease Pencil re-enabled, but I don't think it will, which is a shame. I really want to get rid get down and play with that technology. That source code is being merged in soon, but I'm sure that will be part of 2.8 for sure going forward. Just, I'm not 100% that it'll make the initial alpha release. And I'm keeping an eye on it. Like I said, right now there is no official alpha, but it is in the timeline. So I'm assuming we'll see it soon. But I'm willing to guess that if you went and downloaded the, the most recent nightly build, this version right here, you will have equivalent to the alpha release. Um, basically, it's just a more formalized, more checked build. Nothing really special going on there. But I think you're going to start seeing it, you know, more predominantly linked. So if you go to the Blender site, you'll probably start seeing it as an option immediately here instead of being down under experimental builds. I think it just promotes it a little bit more once they start getting into alpha and beta stuff because they want more of the wider community testing this stuff and banging on it, etc. So I think it's just a more formalized release. But I imagine if you build from the nightly release, you're basically dealing with the alpha version. Anyways, that is the future of Blender. Interested in hearing what you've got to say down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.